time is really important. If you've already watched the, the time target video right now, uh, this will set you up well for understanding default diaries. If you haven't watched the time target video, go back and watch that one first so you can understand the concept around why we want to do a default diary. Default diary is all about how, how do I set my time up? How do I be proactive about using my time to give yourself the best chance of achieving your goals? Now, there's a philosophy you're probably familiar with, the, the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule that says that 80% of your results come from 20% of your activities. Now, if that were true, imagine if you could cut out the 80% of stuff that's not really contributing to your goals and just focus on the 20%. In theory, you could work 20% of the time you're working now. Well, that may not be always uh, be translatable to the real world, but the concept still applies. So we want to look at, okay, how do we use that philosophy, that 80-20 rule, to use as a guideline on how to, how to use your time? Another way to think about it is if you had to say, right now you probably do a whole bunch of different things in your business. If we, had to, if we made a rule that you could only do five different activities in your business, and that's all you could do, five different activities, what would they be? Asking yourself that question forces you to think about, okay, what are the things that only I can do and potentially the highest value activities, and the rest I have to delegate or train other people to be able to do? Well, if we can work out what your top five are, and then spend 80% of your time doing that, you're going to be a long way ahead. You're really going to fast track your progress on uh, achieving your goals. Now, it's easy to say that, but how do you make it more tangible? Well, that's where the default diary comes in. The other place the default diary comes in is you've got your 90-day plan. And your 90-day plan is all about you know, identifying what are some of these 80% activities. You know, the, the activities that give us the 80% type results. So we've got to work out how do we get these activities in these top five, how do we get in the habit of doing them consistently so that we're always pulling the trigger on the right thing? The default diary. Now, if you haven't got a copy of this, you can download it from, uh, from my website. And this is a sample default diary. So in this um, sample, it's sort of mapping out, if I, you know, actually this one's kind of cheating, it's got seven things on it, not five. But if you said, okay, if I, these are the seven things I had to do within my business, you know, how would I ideally map it out, so what would my week look like in the ideal world? And you would say, okay, in this example, uh, this person's got team meetings on Monday mornings and team meetings on Thursdays, some uh, prep time on Friday and uh, Tuesday, some time of working in the business, kind of doing the day-to-day -day operations, that's in green, some marketing time in, uh, in orange there, and some education, some, some workout time. So it's sort of blocked out saying, if I could set my week up any way I wanted, this is how I would do it. And that's got to be our starting point. You've got to take your top five activities and block out, okay, in the ideal world, where would I do it? Now I've color coded it here, which I think is a great way of doing it, because you can have your color code on here and then what you do is when you've got to um, plan your actual week, like the reality week, you plan your reality week with this sitting right next to you. So you can say, okay, here are the choices I'm making and blocking things in, and you try and get it looking as close to this as possible. So while that's not always going to be possible because you've got anomalies that come in and you know, real life happens, but sometimes in our businesses, what we think is real life and just day to day can sometimes be pushed to the side, but if we don't have some other pressure like a default diary pointing us in a certain direction, we don't make certain choices. If you've got in your mind a way that your week should look for you to be able to hit your goals, and you're seeing that your weeks are completely the opposite of that, that's a little red flag or a trigger to make you think, I've got to be doing something different. I've got to be making different choices. Or if someone calls you up and says, hey, can you come out and see us on such and such a time? Without a default diary, you might just say, yeah, sure, I'll go there. But if you've got a default diary, you might then look at it, oh, hang on, that's my time for putting my new marketing system in place. And you might get back to that person and say, well, that time doesn't work for me, but how about this time? And you can reschedule it on what suits you and be more proactive. The great thing about that, that is that very few people operate on a default calendar or a default diary, so they're normally more flexible with their time. And you can now take more control about how you use your time. So there's a sample on my website. There's also a, it's also a blank one. So you can download this one and start to map out uh, what your default calendar looks like. Now, if you're at the stage where you've never done this before and you're completely flying by the seat of your pants, don't try and be too specific about how you're blocking your time out. You might just say, you know what, there's just 
there's three things that I know I should be doing consistently and not doing, just block out time for those and leave the rest open to sort of still fly by the seat of your pants. You'll find that if you start doing that consistently, those top three, you'll start to get more time back and now you can put a fourth one in there and then a fifth one and you'll start gradually to change your habits and become more proactive about your time. Um, so it's a starting, it's a habit that you've got to develop over time, so don't try and bite it all off at once, just start slow. Now the other thing I'll mention, just back to uh, the colour coding, or the way you actually plan your calendar, when you've got your 90 day plan in place, you should be sitting down on a weekly basis and saying, okay, now what does my week need to look like? And for some of you, you might need to be planning two weeks in advance. What do the next two weeks need to look like? And start blocking things in. If you've got gaps in your calendar, guaranteed they're going to get filled with stuff that won't necessarily be proactive or help your business. So you've got to have the right tools in place, whether it's Outlook Calendar or Google Calendar is a great tool, or even just you can use, if you're a paper and pen person, use a, a paper a calendar. But there needs to be something physical that represents how you're going to use your time. It forces you to think about what you're choosing to do and how you use your time and gives you some benchmarks and guidance. So that's it, have some fun with it. Um, one last point actually, you might find the default diary you map out today for where you are is not going to be relevant to you in six months time. Or if you try and map out the default calendar where you want to be in 12 months, it's not going to work for you today. So you've got to map it out relevant to how your world is today. And if you've got a goal of where you want to be, you can certainly map out, okay, this is the ideal week I want to have. Say so this is my target for six months time. But today, this is what my default calendar needs to look like. And you might have incremental default calendars that change as your time, uh, time allocation changes. So have fun with it and uh, help yourself be a little more proactive. Stick to your default diary.